we have submitted, or our fusion uh, was uh, based on uh, four, sub, four subsystems. We have also lots of more, uh, while mostly it's like that two systems uh, fuse the most, and then there is a small addition of other systems. Uh, this, this year we decided to do this four because we have seen some small gain from the uh, four system. Uh, what I would like to highlight is that uh, we really managed to do a very good death set because uh, our death set results were roughly or above the same as the results from the leaderboard. And uh, also the trends, like later we see that the trends holds on the eval data. So it was very good for this evaluation. Uh, like uh, Omid already said, the uh, uh, calibration uh, issue was uh, almost no there, so we managed to calibrate almost perfectly. As we saw from the Omid slides, like most of the team managed to do that. I, I think it's mainly because of the uh, SRE 18 evaluation data, because it was matched condition. Uh, our single best system was uh, FTDNN uh, with heavy therapy LDA, uh, which uh, I will talk more about it later. Uh, we had uh, we had four systems. First one is uh, ResNet based system, then FTDNN, uh, and then we had uh, two variants of uh, similar system. For the first one, we used the denoising uh, as a preprocessing, which uh, itself didn't help uh, if you compare this to the system, but uh, it fused, so we have it here, and then we had we had uh, uh, also uh, another system here, so I'll talk about it more later. Uh, so the data we used uh, was um, like uh, from NIST, uh, NIST data, Fisher Arabic, all switchboard data, and both cell one and two. Uh, with where the box cell data we passed through the uh, compression and uh, MP3 codex. Uh, we used the standard value type adaptation, uh, augmentation uh, with uh, uh, reverberation and Musano. Uh, Musano, we didn't do any, uh, anything special here. Uh, we used the 40 uh, filter melt banks because we saw that uh, it um, outperformed the MFCCs. Uh, we tried also more and uh, less, but that, like, if it, if it went more than 40, it was about the same, so we didn't see anything uh, beneficial from that. In terms of PAD, we used the uh, uh, energy base from Calvi because, uh, again, we didn't see any benefit from using any other VAD we have tried. Even if you do not use any VAD, it's about the same. With the factors, not this. Uh, and uh, we used uh, 300 uh, frames uh, for uh, for training the neural networks, uh, which we used for CMN. But uh, for the bus data, uh, you would see something different because most of the year we uh, were developing for the on the box telet and on the voices database and. Uh, then, in just in the, the end of box telep, we switched to the uh, telephony data, so we didn't have that much time to tune the system properly for the for the uh, telephone. So FTDNN, it's uh, basically the uh, structure GH you proposed uh, last evaluation. Uh, we used the Caldi for it. Uh, we did some small change changes, uh, mainly. Uh, training with more efforts than also the data preparation and uh, the data was the standard data uh, as before, uh, as I said before. Uh, the ResNet uh, is our implementation in PyTorch. Uh, <coughs> the data are the same, we share the, the same uh, archives from Calvi, we just are in differently. It's a standard 50 layer architecture uh, with two different volumes, mean and STD GUI. And we also train it uh, longer than, than normally. Uh, REST ETNM is uh, with adversarial adaptation. Uh, it's a, a we took the uh, Calvi train network and then just re re refine it with the uh, TensorFlow. Uh, and uh, we used uh, domain discriminator, which was trained for English and Arabic. And uh, 
we have here, uh, we use, we use the 4,000 speakers from SRE for English and uh, 2,000 from Arabic. And we had two soft smart layers which uh, were switching between these two languages. Uh, then, uh, like I said, if, because we saw some uh, trends uh, from the Voxtel app and fast evaluation, that especially for ResNet, for the cosine distance was working the best. Uh, it was outperforming the PLD adaptation, uh, PLD uh, scoring. So we ran that also for the uh, telephone data. And here uh, you can see the, the result that for ResNet and also for the PLD and the PLD was quite better. So we didn't use the cosine distance here, but uh, used it only in the, in the bus. And it's zero here tomorrow. Uh, so we, st we stick with the PLDA and then did some uh, adaptation, which I think was the, one of the crucial thing in this evaluation is, I was mentioned already several times. Uh, so we did, um, we did uh, two things at first. Uh, we used the unsupervised uh, adaptation of PLDA using, uh, we compared actually two techniques, uh, CORAL, uh, which is, which transform out of the main data to match the total covariance uh, of the in-domain data, and then uh, FDA, uh, which uh, transform out of the main data so that, it, uh, uh, so that its total covariance is not uh, lower than the uh, total covariance of the in-domain data. Uh, I will show the next, on the next slide. You will see the, uh, you will see the uh, analysis of this tool. Uh, and then, on the top of it, we use the supervised, uh, supervised uh, adaptation of the PLDA uh, with uh, like interpolation of these two. We try the two PLDAs, one of the in-domain data, one of the out-of-domain data, and we just interpolate them. So we we didn't use this uh, in 2018. And we use this. Uh, we use this. So in this year we add this part. So how was the how it affected the results? So here you can see the uh, graph and trends uh, for at first uh, with no adaptation, uh, only a mean centering of the x vectors was done with the SRE uh, 18 data, which was our our dev data for this year. And then you can, you can see two, always two bars. One is our dev data, uh, which was uh, composed of 40% uh, of the evaluation data from last year. And uh, here the, the red one is the uh, SRE19 evaluation data. So if we take the first one with no adaptation and apply the S norm, you can see that we improve quite a bit. Then if we take this and apply either CORAL or, or FDA, uh, still in unsupervised way, we see uh, quite gain here as well. We choose uh, FDA to uh, go farther because we saw during the evaluation, or the, the pre-evaluation period, that it was giving us a better results. On the evaluation data, actually, it's about the same, but on our data was better. So from this, we continue here uh, and edit the supervised adaptation on top of it. And uh, actually, our submitted system system consists uh, was this one, where we took this one and added to the, our dev data, which was almost from only SRE 18 data, also SRE 16 data, because we, we believe that uh, the data uh, that it can uh, add something, but actually. At the end, we, we just can see that it's actually on the evaluator a little bit, just a little bit degraded the performance. So it would be better to it would be better to use only the uh, our dev set which is the SRE 18 data set. So here uh, I start to do some uh, or I show some analysis which might not be uh, completely related to the SRE 19, but it gives you some trends uh, we see uh, we saw. Uh, during our participation. So here you can see uh, different uh, technologies, how the years went. So 2000 CI vector, X vector last year, X vector this year. And here are the results on uh, speakers in the wild, uh, SRL 16, SRL 16 companies. And on our, we have the results on the, uh, on the dead data, which is like, like I said, 40% of the 
SRA18 evaluation data. So you can see that uh, the generally the results go quite uh, down. This only here this is result adaptation and this is with adaptation of PLDA. So you can see that the that the results like how the years goes and technology improves on the same data we can see uh, quite nice improvements. So this is a uh, this is a slide which shows uh, lots of things. It's taken from our uh, from our uh, journal paper, which is uh, right now accepted. We did uh, analysis because of, we did analysis on the different technologies on the different evaluation data, and so you can see here uh, how the evaluation goes, like year by year. Uh, we have participated, like Beauty participated from this year from this evaluation in Surrey 2006. And uh, so here, and, and then each bar represents different technologies. So the red one is a GMM, then I show you here. Red one uh, is a GMM, uh, green uh, GMM is eigenchannel adaptation, then JFA, I vector, uh, X vector, and then these two bars are what we have submitted that particular year. Uh, so this is a single best system, and this is a fusion. So you can see. Uh, we can see different trends here. The first I want to show is that generally uh, the tests get harder uh, over the years, and mainly this mainly past two years. And we think it's mainly because of the test durations get shorter, and also the different channel than before. We have we haven't seen before, and also different language. Then uh, what we can see here, I'll show you on SRE18 that uh, the technology gets down and down, which is kind of obvious because we, we develop uh, and so on. But uh, we can get here, for example, answer, if we would have uh, X vectors in, back in 2004, would we win the evaluation? Uh, so if you look at here, so uh, this is the I vector and this is the X vector. We do not have the results for the, for the uh, submission, like what was submitted, because we didn't, uh, we didn't participate. But actually, even if, you, if we see here, uh, then so actually it was around time where the IV channel compensation was. So it's, uh, the submission was probably somewhere around here. So we might win, but actually, we compare it with the I vectors, we would not uh, be that great because back in, like in 2004, we didn't have enough data to train the uh, Then. If you look further, it's already like usual trend is that better technology uh, means better results. And up to probably 2010, the executors were the best, would be the best uh, already. Uh, so, but we didn't have it. So next, uh, next slide is the impact of the data. Uh, <coughs> so I have uh, different uh, different technology here. And then uh, the bars represent the different data sets. So the first thing, first thing is a box celeb uh, data, which so I, I evaluate on the SRE 2010 data, condition five. So uh, at first we trained on a box celeb because we thought that it's kind of a very nice to uh, show like a lot of uh, lots of data, lots of speakers, but from completely out of domain uh, data sets. Uh, so we can see that we can see that uh, we get usually much worse results than uh, using the other data sets. But let's say for these vectors, if we have a lot of uh, data from out of domain, we can do, build quite a good system. Uh, if we continue, so before 2004 we had only switchboard. So let's say in I vectors, every every step like uh, more data and in domain data helps uh, in the performance. While let's say in the X vectors, if we have a switchboard, uh, we get actually worse results than with the box seller because there was uh, reasonably like a lot of less data than in box seller. And uh, if we take uh, SRE 2004 data, uh, we get even much worse system than let's say even compared with the iVector because uh, 2004 data, there's only 300 speakers, which is not enough to train the X vectors. 
but uh, it was uh, good to, uh, it was like more match data to the 2010, so uh, let's say Islanders made a better job. But then when we add with, like, another databases from the NIST, then we get much, much better results. So to conclude the talk, uh, right now, uh, because everything is around the X-Vector, so we see an internal fight uh, for GPUs in our faculty, and it's probably all over the world right now, uh, while the CPUs are kind of lying there and not to become as anything. Uh, then, uh, generally, the technology is improving, uh, and we see the positive trends, uh, despite the, the, the evaluations get harder and harder. Um, I think, to answer Doug's question already, uh, the adaptation to the target domain plays a big role, uh, and I think that it's not the way to, come to collect the new data. We need to focus more on the how to do it, because anyway, we would not have time and resources to, to, compute, to, to uh, collect the data. So uh, there is lots of work in fine-tuning the neural network that we train with a huge amount of data and then just fine-tuning it for the particle data set. There is lots of work in PLD adaptation or score normalization, which kind of abandon it sometime and then we are getting back to it. Uh, it's kind of tricky to uh, this, this, this fine tuning because sometimes it might help, sometimes not. So we find out the way how to do it uh, correctly and how to verify that it would work uh, for the particle, uh, particle domain. And probably try to look for, for available databases. Uh, so, but the adaptation plays a big any stage uh, in the system. Thank you.